somewhere in Uganda's district of Karangara. There is an upscale hotel facility worth anyone's leisure time. Its neighborhood to Africa's largest freshwater lake makes the air clean for pleasure seekers. Just a few years ago, the water level was normal and caused no anxiety. Nature is the biggest bank we have in the planet. Quartz is the biggest bank. Nature. That's the biodiversity, plus everything there. Now, any attempt to loot this bank as it's occurring now uh, is turning to the collapse of this bank. Port Bell is located in Luzira, a Kampala suburb in Nakawa, one of the five administrative divisions of Uganda's capital city. Its location at the end of a narrow inlet of Lake Victoria makes it a busy place for tourists, fishermen and traders. It is also an operating area for ferries that link Kampala to other ports, including Jinja, Kisumu, Musoma and Mwanza. Unfortunately, all these ventures are on the verge of collapse as the early and mid-January heavy rains led to an increase in water levels that have had an effect on developments close to the shores. Miyale jimu enkuba uyalinge tonya nyingi neji sindika mazi ni gabe langa manji munyanja. Ya tonya e Kenya neva nyingi, e Kongo neva nyingi, Tanzania atenga jojo ne miga e jidieyo. Victoria. If anyone wanted to get a real feel of the rise in water levels on Lake Victoria, then Miami Sand Beach is another place. It takes a less than 20 minute motorboat ride to get to the area. Here, houses which were formerly happening places are immersed in water to the disadvantage of business owners, partygoers and tourists. The premises are all abandoned with just a few caretakers present. the <laughs> This is just a case study of what other showers could be experiencing on this lake that is shared among three East African countries. In Uganda, districts of Jinja, Mayuge, Buikwe, Mukono, Kampala, Masaka, Rakai and Karangara are on the shores. People living around are affected by these water levels, a disaster that experts could have seen coming. There are also other activities like uh, sand mining, which has been extensive in quite a, a number of the shows. What, that, what this does is that it allows the water to go beyond its natural boundary. Because naturally the lake over years has developed certain areas where there are bays and inlets and the beaches. So when you start harvesting sand in huge amounts, like it's being done, in parts of the Lake Victoria area in around Masaka. Then you start getting a man-made you know, boundary that, uh, that cannot stop the water uh, going beyond where it would naturally flow. In 1962, we had the 61, 62, we had the highest rainfall in Uganda. And Lake Victoria rose by almost four meters. And yeah, you are, you, it's better to be concerned. If four meters is on a river, it can remain there. Four meters on the lake means that it's, it's coming out to get people. The applications are there. Are, are there. Uh, these are projected studies and uh, we hope that they are wrong. That's the best wish you can do. The last time Lake Victoria is recorded to have experienced such water levels was in 1962. Levels that have never retreated. This trend, a Ugandan scientist recently predicted that it was bound to reoccur between 2020 and 2021, signs of which are already being experienced. 
the amount of water coming in is not equivalent to the amount of water getting out because it is the it's like a basin that is getting water and then there's a, a pipe that is getting out water imagine that uh, that is the Nile the Nile River taking quite a bit of the water out but then several small rivers bringing in water into the basin Lake Victoria Africa's largest lake by surface area is also the world's largest tropical water mass and second largest by surface area. Geologically estimated to be 400,000 years old, its continuous rise in water levels continues to worry residents living around the shores. Henry Okurut, UBC.